Good afternoon. Welcome to the GAMIN webinar for April 2015. Um, today we are going to go over the data and resources uh, for maize research on the GAMIN website. Before we get started, I just want to give you a few tips um, that may help with the to make the most out of this presentation. Uh, to improve the quality of, your the, of the streaming, you may want to uh, lower the resolution of the video. Uh, there is a, a low, uh, you can see if you mouse over, uh, you'll see that, uh, that item. Uh, you can also watch the video in full screen by clicking this uh, little button with the four arrows. And last, at the bottom, you'll see a chat window where you can write uh, questions and I'll be able to read it, uh, as well as my our team, uh, the Gaming uh, development team is also online and will be able to answer some of your questions. Okay, um, let's get started. Uh, Gamin, some of you may be fami more familiar with, the, with the us. Uh, it's a comparative uh, research for plant plants. Um, our, uh, our domains are uh, basically the genomes and pathways, and this is uh, the homepage that you see when you come to Gramin.org. You'll see a navigation sidebar on the left um, and also uh, our, our, our news item in the form of blogs at the bottom. Uh, the, there are basically some overlap between these two areas. Uh, for genomes, I'm gonna, which is uh, the wh what I'm going to be focusing on uh, for this presentation, uh, is a genome browser, some other tools like the BLAST and Biomart. Um, Pathways, uh, the biopsych uh, platform, and the plant reactome. And for both of these, uh, you we have um, intersecting points like uh, a simple search where you can uh, try searching for genes, proteins, uh, pathways, uh, uh, interpro domains, uh, SNPs. Uh, we have a help desk uh, for your queries and an uh, FTP for bulk downloads. Um, in genomes, uh, we have we currently host 39 uh, plant complete uh, reference genomes, uh, including maize, and uh, and this is uh, the, the just a simplified view of, of the different various groups. Um, as I said, I'm going to focus on the genomes, and there are uh, three entry points. As as for most uh, other things, uh, other tools in Garmin, you'll find uh, multiple entry points for the different. Um, are different tools. So if you click on any of those uh, links uh, highlighted in previous slides, you'll come to this page, which is, uh, which is the, the, the entry point for um, the genomes uh, section of Gamin. And this is a work in that we do in collaboration, uh, very close collaboration with the Ensemble Genomes Group. Um, and if you are familiar with Ensemble, this is the uh, genome annotation system and the Ensemble Genomes I Division is in charge of the genomes of invertebrate, metazoa, protists, bacteria, fungi, and plants. Um, and this is led by Paul Kersey. Um, so to enter the maze, uh, the maze genome, the maze browser, you can click on the C maze. You can select maze from our favorite uh, drop-down menus. Um, and you come to this uh, to a page that looks uh, like the following. So in the maze page, uh, you'll see several section, uh, sections. Um, on top here, you'll see a genome assembly, which will give you more information about the, how the reference assembly was, um, was built, um, some statistics, and etc. On the genome gene annotation part, you'll see um, uh, more, more details about the gene models um, and uh, associated annotations, including um, uh, doma uh, protein domains, cDNAs, uh, uh, RNAs, etc. Uh, there is a, com uh, the co a comparative genomics section where you can see uh, you can generate a gene tree. Uh, well, n you can visualize uh, gene family gene trees. You can um, obtain lists of orthologs and paralogs. Um, you can, uh, there is also a section of variation. And um, for, uh, to entry at the any of these, you can simply enter your uh, search uh, 
uh, term. In this case, it's going to be uh, limited to the genome section. And um, if you are doing this from the from a specific uh, from a species page, in this case maize, you're going to look into that um, database um, specifically. Um, and another way to um, go into the genome browser is by clicking on any of these uh, little examples uh, the icons will tell will take you directly to the genome browser um, a lot of the the things that I am describing right now are going to become more um, easier to follow in a, a, a demo a live um, a little a video a, a recorded demo that um, I will present at the end of the seminar but at least um, Right now, I wanted to give you, you know, a, a flavor uh, to give you some um, some um, head start. Um, I am going to be describing. I'm going to be uh, uh, taking you through some exercises uh, so you can visualize the new gene annotation tracks uh, for maize that we have, as well as uh, we can visualize uh, the variation data sets that we have. Uh, within the last year, we added uh, the Pansia 2.7. Um, data set which uh, in contrast to HubMap uh, is not as um, it doesn't have as many SNPs uh, but it was it was uh, it was uh, it sampled many more many more lines um, including Teosinte lines um, okay so let's get started uh, once you are in the genome browser there will be uh, five different views that you can access um, on here on top. You can see the, the species page, which I already show you for maize. You can see a location page, which where you can see the, your gene of interest if, if you um, enter the page through a gene, a specific gene. Uh, the gene page for that gene. You can um, select one of the trans transcripts, uh, uh, transcript or transcripts, um, and as well as a, a specific variation uh, for the gene, as need say. Uh, you can also, uh, a lot of these are clickable, and when I go to the, to the recorded demo, you'll see what uh, these many little buttons allow you to do. To configure the browsers, um, there is also this is a, a very uh, useful uh, thing to, to know. You, um, there is like a, this icon you'll see throughout uh, the browser in many points. It's like, it's a symbol for, for configuring either a page or a specific uh, image. Um, you, you may accomplish this as well by mousing over a track, a specific track, and then uh, a little pop-up window will appear giving you uh, several options as well. Whenever you mouse over uh, symbols in the browser, you also get a small legend uh, describing what, uh, what, this, what clicking on, on, on something can um, allow you to do. Okay. So um, let's get, uh, let's, uh, I'll get into more detail about the new browser tracks. The first one you might uh, be most interested in is the MakerP gene models. Um, this is, this is uh, simply the publication paper that you can, um, that I refer you to if uh, for more specific um, details. But in general, we'll tell you that um, this, is, uh, this, is this gene set is also known now as the 6A and it includes over 40,000 genes. Um, it, uh, it, included, it includes more than um, 4,000 new genes relative uh, to the last uh, build in um, uh, the, the, the filter gene set. Um, uh, some s a number of models were uh, improved with additional UTRs. Uh, some models were removed because of uh, missing uh, supporting evidence from those that um, that were uh, studied, included in the in the analysis, um, and uh, a couple more um, annotations over here. So how you see this in the browser, uh, the way you you uh, you include this in your view because it's not a default view, is by uh, uh, clicking on your configure this page, which is gonna pop up this big window. And now you're gonna select external data under genes and transcripts. And this will have the choice of including maker P genes as part of your um, uh, uh, genes, gene tracks. Um, you, can, you have a few uh, different styles to choose from. 
And when you finish uh, selecting which one you want, then you need to click uh, the arrow, check mark. And you, what you will see in the, in the lower of your screen is that there is a new track with your makeup jeans on it. And now you can compare um, how, the, how these line up with the uh, uh, more classical Garmin jeans or uh, mRNA alignments, ESTs, uh, you name it, any of um, uh, the features of your interest. And if you're more interested in getting the full set, you can um, download these from the Camin website as well as the from the Made GDB website, uh, FTP site, I, <laughs> I should uh, specify. Um, uh, by the way, uh, all of these slides are going to be available in PDF format from our, uh, from our, our website. And, from, uh, and this is being recorded, so you'll be able to re uh, hear it again in the future from the Gamin YouTube channel. Okay, so going back to um, the tracks. Uh, the second uh, track that we have added uh, is, uh, is about, it, it shows uh, genome-wide patterns of DNA, uh, of cytosine methylation in two lines, two maze lines, B73 and MO17. Uh, for this, again, the way you can uh, access is by uh, uh, you can include this in your view is by uh, going to your configuration uh, page, uh, selecting regulation, and you'll have uh, many choices. Uh, in, in fact, there are four uh, different combinations because we are projecting uh, methylation CHG and CPG and uh, in the two lines that I mentioned. So uh, once you select how you want to view it, this is one style of configuration that, uh, that, I, that I like, uh, where radios are shown as, um, as wiggle plots and uh, coverage on the area are is, is shown as a, a kind of a density uh, colored plot. And you can see um, wherever, you know, the difference uh, for, for areas where you have genes from areas intergenic regions and some other uh, details that uh, you can explore in more detail. Um, the, next, uh, the next tracks, um, I combine them under a single slide because they're both um, mRNA alignments. Uh, here are the two papers uh, where you can read more about the actual data. Um, I am just going to mention that uh, the, for the transcriptomes, uh, this must be used, m could be useful in your research because uh, uh, mostly uh, the wild type, uh, because uh, the nascent mRNAs are distinct from mature mRNAs because they're not often not spliced. And this could represent a uh, known pole to transcription. Uh, as far as uh, long non coding RNAs, uh, we have uh, it's a limited amount of over, of over 20,000 fugitive, um, but the most, the most, with most. Uh, with higher confidence about 1700. So again, for this, you're gonna go to, you configure uh, this page uh, link, get the window, look for mRNA and protein alignments. And from here, you can select whether you wanna see the wild type alone or wild type plus the mutant polymerase, uh, as well as the long non-coding. Select your the style and uh, check mark and this is something like what you would see. Uh, most of our, the features that you'll see on a browser are clickable. So in, if you click on, for example, this long non-coding uh, um, um, non RNA, you'll see uh, their co its coordinates, start and stop, and say you want to compare whether this, is, uh, this overlaps at all with, your, with uh, one of the gene models or how, how does it uh, fare with the nascent RNA uh, data we have and you can again click and compare. Now let's say that uh, you have um, an image uh, that, that you are satisfied with, you took, uh, you added and removed tracks as you wish, uh, selected the, the, your favorite style, and uh, you want to export this image. Uh, so the way to do that, uh, you are going to click on this um, uh, top uh, icon over here which, which uh, will tell you that, uh, that, that that's, uh, that's useful for exporting. You can uh, export your images in these formats or your text. 
as CSS. And this is how your text would look like. Um, the next um, little thing that I will describe is, uh, is how you can uh, visualize a synteny of uh, complete uh, regions, of orthologous regions. Say you have this, uh, this same gene that we've been working with, the LOX8, and um, by uh, looking at the synteny between, uh, for this uh, chromosome, uh, or mass, you see that uh, it, uh, it has syn is syntenic, this region is syntenic uh, to a region in uh, a chromosome 6 in Sorghum. Uh, and you can see the same thing on the browser. And in this case, uh, you can even see a little m extra. You can, uh, you can learn that uh, the uh, LOX8 uh, maze chromosome has a Paralogous uh, log seven chromosome on that <laughs> gene on chromosome ten, and uh, these are both uh, these are orthologous to the sorghum uh, uh, to a putative lipoxygenase in sorghum chromosome ten. Um, if uh, you choose to center your synteny uh, map in on chromosome six, you'll be able to see, uh, visually see first uh, here that this region in sorghum uh, chromosome 6 has is intenic to this one region in chromosome 10 and this one region in chromosome 2. Um, and then um, by also by clicking on this um, on the uh, sorghum region that gene has two um, homologues homologous regions in maize. Here are the exact coordinates and you can go to a, to a, a visual comparison on the browser and some other neat things um, to, um, to support that these uh, two genes, these are th that there is cosynteny at the gene level um, defining this homolog. Um, another nice neat thing that you can um, do on the browser is view the uh, variation data. In this case, I have that same gene that we've been working with, the LOX8, um, and you can see the variants color-coded uh, and the whether, uh, whether there is an amino acid change, uh, also marked, and uh, you can see overlapped uh, with uh, interprodomains. In this case, uh, the more prominent one is the lipoxygenase. Uh, you can see this uh, intron exon uh, boundaries as well. And again, everything is clickable. You can um, also determine uh, whether uh, there is conservation of your, um, of this variation. You can, you have, for example, two, um, uh, the two, uh, two species and uh, aligned back to back and you'll see, and you can f uh, look for uh, conservation of the, the SNP variant. You can also, uh, for a particular, for any variant, in every variant, um, you can uh, obtain uh, more data. Um, is there, a, uh, sorry, I will have a question here. Is there a way to get all the synthetic gene list? Um, not just a region. Right, not just a region. One of my, uh, my, uh, my coworkers, yes, it is available. Yes. I I have to think about how to get this. Um, let me let me keep going, and at the end because I have my demo is a little bit long, um, so at the end uh, we can get this too. Okay, um, okay, Josh is giving you a link. Okay, thank you, Josh. Um, so for the for the variant uh, for each variant, you can you can see whether you know in this case. Uh, this variant has been is included in both uh, data sets that we have, the have map to, as well as the Pantheia. Uh, it has two, uh, two labels, two IDs. And uh, you can see every population in those two. Uh, the have map is, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's only marked as C maze, but here are uh, 12 of the 14 uh, populations in um, Pantheia with alleles and genotype uh, frequencies. Uh, um, another tool for Gamint uh, we have is uh, the Gamint Mark. Uh, 
Uh, this is based on the Biomart utility, um, also developed um, with, uh, uh, with, fo with folks in um, Ensemble. Um, what this allow you is, uh, imagine you are going to the supermarket, um, but instead uh, you are uh, getting genes and uh, interpro domains for those genes and go associations and uh, functional, uh, you know, uh, functional characterizations, um, orthologs and paralogs, etc. So in this example, what I'm, um, what I'm gonna, what I would like to get is uh, all of the transcription factors that have alleles that uh, insert a stop, that change an amino acid into a stop codon. So at uh, premature, uh, premature uh, termination of your uh, gene product, and for to do that, um, there are various ways. A in this case, on the left, uh, every time that you select uh, an item, it's going to be, it's going to have, it's going to appear, um, it's going to be added to your list. So this is kind of your shopping list at this point. You're going to be start filtering. You start with a big data set. In this case, uh, we selected the variations for maize. You start filtering, uh, and you ask for only those variants that have a stop gained as a functional, as a in, uh, functional uh, feature. Um, and then in your um, attribute uh, means what you're gonna get in your results. You're asking for uh, a, a gene ID, the consequence to the transcript, in this case, um, stop gain, but it could be a stop uh, loss, or it could be uh, missing mutation and uh, so on. Um, and I'm adding a second data set, which is gonna be the genes uh, in maze. I want to know exactly to which genes do these variations uh, map to. So, uh, but in addition, I would like to uh, get whether they, those genes have interpro domains. So this is what I'm gonna ask in my results table, and this is what I'm getting here. A gene ID, a transcript, uh, the, the consequence of the transcript, the, the variation ID, the interpro ID, and a short description. BLAST. Um, this is uh, actually uh, this you what you may see uh, soon in uh, the Gamin website. It's going to be a little bit different than this image because we are um, in the process of updating our software. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a new and improved version. But as you as you're most familiar with, uh, most of you are familiar with uh, this uh, blast allows you to align um, sequences and identify uh, you know. Um, uh, identify them in um, in genomes and, and DNA sequences as well as protein databases. Um, other thing that you can do in the browser is add custom tracks. Uh, in this case, uh, so these are this is a list of the allowed uh, formats, file formats that you can use, and uh, these are simply uh, three examples. I'm not going to go into detail for uh, matters of time. I really want to get to the uh, little video. Uh, other things you can do is analyze your own data using some of the tools that we have, uh, like the Ensemble Converter. Say, in this case, you still have uh, uh, data in, in uh, reference uh, V2 for maze, and you want to leave those coordinates into uh, the new V3. Um, you can you ha say you have a list of uh, SNPs, and you want to predict, you want to see whether they will have an effect in, your, uh, in, the, in, the, in gene products. You can um, you can run it through the vari variant predict effect uh, predictor tool, uh, or VEP for short. Uh, there is region report, data slices, slicers, and um, some other uh, genetic analysis portal um, tools in the in this portal um, in the in the Gamins archive. Uh, pathways. I'm only gonna briefly briefly um, touch on this uh, to tell you that we have uh, two. Um, Two platforms. The first one is uh, is the uh, biosig uh, based platform, where we develop in collaboration with MaceDB, the MaceSig, um, as well as um, we mirror. We we build uh, four of those ten and mirror uh, from other groups uh, the databases in in this uh, platform, and they are currently served um, through a iPlant um, server. Uh, the plant reactome is a very, uh, very neat uh, platform that we are uh, currently ex um, expanding rapidly. 
uh, it was uh, built um, based on a curated pathways for rice and um, uh, Arabidopsis pathways are currently curated but have not yet been released. Uh, there uh, we have done analysis to uh, project uh, ortholog pathways in 33 species including female. And I uh, would simply invite you to um, come to, to join us in one of the uh, 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 plant reactome specific webinars to learn a lot more about um, how to uh, explore this tool. Uh, here is a simple image of the what you uh, can expect to see for May in the May psych. Um, as I mentioned, um, uh, yeah, these icons and the in the iPlant server and these icons mean uh, uh, simply point that there is uh, experimental evidence for uh, for a lot of this um, information. Uh, this is uh, what you uh, what the plant reactum um, homepage looks like. Um, again, you have here a menu, a drop down menu for uh, the 33 species and um, you can see pathways uh, projected to all of those and um, one added uh, bonus is that you'll be able to uh, uh, see what uh, what's known for uh, for the genes uh, in these pathways, in these reactions um, in the MACDB database um, where uh, including you know the uh, expression data um, in the ESP browser from the bar, uh, the resource. Okay, um, well, last thing I just mentioned uh, in the archives, we still have um, legacy information. Uh, it's not it being actively maintained, it's, uh, it's preserved, but some of this data has to be uh, taken with, uh, with a grain of salt because it's not, it hasn't been, um, it, it may not be mapped to the most current uh, assembly. You can reach us uh, with the through via email, uh, use our contact uh, feedback form, or uh, one of our social networking um, tools, uh, the Gamin uh, Facebook page, or by via Twitter. Um, and the last thing that I would like to do, um, I know we come to the end of our uh, webinar, but uh, I think it might be most useful if uh, if you could spare a few more minutes. I would like to show you um, a little video. Um, that is going to uh, go through the steps that I that I describe in in static slides, and you'll see uh, dynamically how how we do this. So for this, I'm gonna explore. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the same example on the slides, uh, the Lox8 locus, and just uh, will tell you that um, is the tassel seed one gene that is encoding this uh, lipo oxygenase, and uh, and. Uh, one thing that, uh, that, that you may want to remember just from this slide is that it has a role in sex determination um, and uh, under formation. Okay, uh, so I am going to uh, have to start uh, my webinar from a little demo from here. Okay, and I'm going to project the full screen. Okay, here it is. So what you'll see here. Okay, so I was gonna start by typing simply LOX8 and going directly to the gene, but to make it more um, illustrative, I'm gonna use uh, lipoxygenase to show you the, the power of our, our search tool. So I get 478 records, that's too, ma too many, so I'm gonna filter by species and I'm gonna go only um, uh, get the list of the 18 in May. Now I have more, um, more filtering to do. I can get pathways or genes. I simply want the gene. So I get a list of uh, 10, it's still too many. <laughs> so one way to find it is uh, to define uh, what is my lock, uh, LOX8 is looking for something that has to do with text determination or answer formation. In this case, I chose um, answer development and I get these two genes. One of them I'll tell you ahead of time because it's gonna take a little time to load is the LOX7 gene that I showed you before. It's uh, the paralog for LOX8. And um, see, there it is. And uh, there is the LOX8 the LOX that uh, we're gonna be working with. So uh, these are the three, uh, the three tabs that you get once you um, identify your gene. And the first one I already showed you. Um, uh, you can you can uh, go to your the your speci species specific page, but um, y you have the choice. Uh, that drop the drop down menu will tell you also to uh, t if you want to change species. You can click on the on the icons to go directly to the to the 
to the uh, browser pages that uh, examples, specific examples, or click on those um, examples in there. Okay, so let's let's get started with the exercise. And um, here you see that uh, Maker P jeans are not there, so that's that's one exercise. I'm going to include those. Uh, first, let's let's see what these do. Do the track height can be modified by clicking on them or reset to the original uh, to say vertical space. This can also be movable with, uh, with uh, your mouse. Um, another thing, uh, another uh, or reset to the, uh, the tracks. You see, when I, when I mouse over uh, anything, I get uh, the instruction what it allows me to do. For this drag and select is kind of neat uh, because uh, it, it is like a rubber band. It allows you to choose the region that you want to focus on, expand it, make it bigger. I'm not gonna make it bigger because for this exercise, I, I wanna keep my, my region um, fairly small, um, but, uh, but this is the button uh, that allows you to do that. Um, and uh, you'll be you're able to scroll. If you leave that window the size you like it, and you wanna move a little to the right, a little to the left, or, or use those uh, top buttons to scroll. Um, and the only thing that you're gonna need to do uh, is at the end, you want to update the image at the bottom so it focus on the area that you're interested in. So you click on update this image. And uh, you can, you know, expand or uh, this is another way to um, zoom in and out of a particular region. But I do want to stay focused on my gene of interest. and I'm gonna reduce the size of my tracks as again. So this is it. Um, oh, I can see that my lux um, A gene is not, uh, uh, is not centered, so I, I may have to change this. I, I will change this in a minute. So external data, if you remember, those are the maker P gene models. I'm gonna select normal. Um, I, I, ad I suggest that you don't um, turn on the, the IDs because they are, uh, make it too bulky. You can turn off all at once if you click on the top and you can select, in this case, I'm selecting uh, just to show ESTs from maze and CDNAs, normals, no level. Um, and I'm gonna add the wild type for the nascent RNAs as well as the uh, long non-coding RNAs if there is any hits in this region. So, okay, those, those are my choices. Uh, for regulation, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to select only uh, one of the examples for uh, P73, the coverage as a, as a gradient and the ratio as a, as a wiggle plot. And just uh, so there is a comparison, the, these are the two lines. I think in this, in this example, it's not gonna be much, they're not gonna be much different, but at least so you know you, you, that you can do it. So while it's loading, uh, I will tell you ahead, if you, if you see at the bottom, uh, the locks A gene is not centered. Uh, okay, so uh, again, you can mouse over, and configure a specific track. You don't have to go to configure the whole page, open that big windows, but right on the site, you can do this. Uh, some of the other buttons there allow you to, s to share the image with your collaborators without you know, making it public. Um, here again, you can click on the on the features and, and get a little more detail. And now that's the point where I realize that I'm out of um, I'm not centered, so I'm gonna try to get my uh, the full gene and I'm gonna update the image. Okay, now the full lux A gene is in and you can explore. Okay, there is, 
I can see some of the supporting evidence for these genes. I can see that uh, you know there is consistency between the um, maker P annotation and the gramine um, annotation. I can turn on and off uh, tracks to include or exclude from from my view. And again, uh, everything clickable. I think. Oh, okay. So it's still going. You can share, resize, export, and I'm going to export the image as a PNG and also the text. Why not? All of this annotation into a text format that I can upload in any other genome browser that um, accepts this uh, DFF format. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're done with the, with the tracks, how to configure, how to download image, and etc. So I'm just gonna quickly touch on some of the other um, things that I show you uh, that I mentioned in the presentation. I'm gonna uh, I'm requesting here a, a the gene tree for this for for the family of lipoxygenases that bear resemblance with uh, LOS8. So it's gonna it's including over 300 genes. Here is a collapsed form. You can see your gene of interest in red font and paralogs of this gene in blue font within species paralogs, I should say. You can click on any of the nodes and get more information. You can expand a single, a single subtree. You can download uh, the data to draw this tree in the New Hampshire format, also known as New Week. Um, or you can simply expand if you're curious about what's the closest besides, um, you know, sorghum and what was the cetaria that was learning. Um, you can expand this specific subtree. And see a little more detail. You can see a lot of um, wheat and, and rice um, genes just above your gene of interest, or you can decide to view the full expanded tree, all 300 and something genes. That's gonna be a little bulky for most of, um, to make much, uh, much sense of it, but you never know. <laughs> you may benefit from, from a big, um, you know, the big, the larger view of things. Um, you can get back to your original um, condensed image as well. Oh, you can highlight, uh, say, uh, those uh, lipoxygenase that had uh, aso uh, associated with, uh, with the anther development, for example, and using that box as a filter, you search among the Go and Interpro terms that all of these genes um, may be associated with. If you click on view current gene only, you're gonna get to the, you're resetting to the original size uh, where things were more condensed and the image was uh, more manageable in a way. Um, you can see now in green highlight, uh, your all of the genes that, have that are associated with that, um, it was a go term or uh, here, you can see at the bottom uh, here, annotated with the got go term. So it can uh, it can be a go term or an interpro domain. You can get a list of the orthologs that you that also um, that were um, inferred with this uh, with the Compara uh, software. Uh, here, and you can download this long list. You know, with all the with all the information, um, percentage similarity. Um, source, location, and all that into a, an Excel file. And while this is opening, you can also get um, click on the paralogs link and get the same information, but um, 
for intraspecies parallel. Okay. So if I click on, I already have click on parallel, so you can download or you can view um, the alignment for this. And you can see uh, it's listing on the top uh, ancient parallels, but the first parallel that we see um, in maize is the actual is our actual um, log a log seven gene. And if I click in the region, I can compare. You can see it's a uh, 86 percent, um, 86 to 8 88 um, percent conservation at amino acid level. And one last uh, neat thing uh, that this example is going to allow me to show you is how you can flip the orientation of something. So it's um, um, to make it clear. So I, I'm seeing right now just the, the, the span, uh, the length of the gene, the logs eight versus the log seven right there oh uh, not yet uh, so i click on so there is uh, the region comparison so i can select a different species remember um, there was sorghum in those examples in the in the slides so i'm selecting uh, to compare now the paralog the paralog in, in maize has been removed and I'm gonna see the uh, the alignment between the uh, sorghum and maize gene logs eight. Okay, I can expand it or make it smaller. If I if I look at here, uh, this is how I can get the synteny for this um, region. You'll see the the region is in red. It has a um, it has a hit on uh, right. Uh, well, <laughs> in this case, it's a rice chromosome four, but I want to change it to sorghum because it's the one that I show in my presentation. And I see now that this region has a has a has a hit on um, sorghum chromosome six, which is simply you know, reaffirming what I, what I already show you on this uh, static slide. And I can go to the, to the region. I can look at, the, at that exact gene. I would need to, uh, to center, to start with a sorghum gene in order to see um, the parallax. Now you see, uh, the, these are inverted. So sorghum, the sorghum gene is in the reverse orientation. So I can e click on that flip strand little um, two arrow icon and now they should be um, should be nicely aligned so I'm increasing the I'm zooming out this region and I'll see um, a few more genes also lining up because it, this is a synthetic region so conserved and okay I believe this is where is my yes my little video ends and I just want to thank you very much for your attention. And if you need, um, well, uh, again, if you need to contact us, if you have any questions, um, we'll, we'll, we are here to respond to you. Um, or you can email us, um, give us your comments, uh, suggestions. And again, this uh, webinar is going to be uh, posted on the Garmin YouTube channel. And the slides I will, um, up on the on the Garmin uh, outreach page.